All right, here he is, two-time defending Fortinet champion, the Prince of Quail Hollow, Max Homa. Thanks for playing a hole with us, Max. Thanks, well, what, a, what, a, what an intro. <laughs> um, all right, so where are we? What's this hole? What's going on? Uh, we are at the lovely Whisper Rock Golf Club in Scottsdale, Arizona. We are on the upper course, 16th hole, par five. It is freezing and kind of windy. This is not not common this time of year, but um, you know this is this is what makes us great. We adapt and uh, we excel. All right, well we'll let you take a rip and then we'll ask you some more questions. What's the most nervous you've ever been before a tee shot? Right this moment, I didn't yeah. hit a golf ball. I got two cameras going. Um, actual was probably my first tee shot at the Walker Cup. Thought I was gonna throw up. <laughs> All right, this is probably similar to that. Yeah, we're right up there. Really quick, Max, do you breathe in or out right before you swing? Oh, that that's was pretty smashed, good. actually. <laughs> Out, I guess, was the answer. What's the first thing you do when you get up in the morning? Pee. <laughs> That's a good answer. How about for breakfast? Uh, I don't love breakfast. It's my least favorite meal. So, I don't know. Sometimes I get smoothies. Sometimes my lovely wife wakes up and makes me some form of breakfast. Sometimes I get a bar. <laughs> yeah, what do you feel an early tea time? How do you handle that? Uh, well, I, on the road I eat, I gotta eat a lot. So I'll, I'll go do the, we're, we're very, very, very spoiled on tour. We'll get an omelet, get a full breakfast. I just don't like, I don't enjoy the food. I'm not a big eggs guy. So um, it's just not, it's not ideal for me, but I, you gotta eat something before you play. And say we were just walking off the first tee, or I guess walking up to the first tee, what's your favorite game to play, money game at home? What would you propose? We play a great uh, game called Hilo. It's a two-on-two two two game. Um, both scores count, so the low ball of your team, if you win that, you get two points. Uh, the higher score gets one point, and if you blitz both, you get, all f uh, you get four points instead of three. And then you, you know, decide the monetary value of each point. But I like it, it keeps everybody involved. Uh, especially when we play like, when you play four pros playing a lot of money games, you know, there is a ton of birdies. So if your team makes two birdies and they only make one typical best ball game, that's a tie. Feels like that should be worth a win. So I like, I like when all four uh, balls count. What kind of units are we talking here? Oh, I don't think, we don't get to. There's certain groups I know will get aggressive and then there's certain groups where we keep it friendly, um, but nothing uh, nothing that we're gonna lose a friendship over. I like that. Um, all right, what's your best non-golf sport? Uh, probably basketball. Do you still play any pickup? Not a lot, <laughs> I'm almost 32, not a, lot of, not a lot of guys are out there asking to play pickup basketball, so <laughs> no. <laughs> you did some though out of college, right? Yeah, I, my coach didn't know it, uh, but whatever, I'm past that. Uh, I'm probably past that threshold. You can't really bench me now, but uh, we used to play basketball a lot in uh, in college. If you hurt your ankle, it was that you stepped off a curb wrong. <laughs> so it was fun. I, I loved it playing with some of my teammates, meeting people doing that. I, I've always liked basketball. It's a nice exercise, but it's also something competitive. And uh, I don't know. I always I've always had a feel for basketball, so I enjoy watching it a lot still. But uh, getting to play it here and there, even just shooting every once in a while, feels nice. What was your worst subject in school? Ooh, probably history. I just, I like history a lot, but in school, it, I think it trains you just to memorize. I didn't get a feel for it where I was like, I was, I didn't like doing math, but I was good at math because I felt like it was like black and white. So I don't know, that was, uh, it was kind of backwards because I like history much more than math. Do you have a favorite historical figure? Like ben Franklin? Yeah, I mean, I, that's a really good question. Dang, this thing you gotta be careful because you say somebody, they find out they were a bad person somewhere right. in a year. Uh, favorite historical person? That's a phenomenal question. I was always, <laughs> this is a random one. This is more just me digging in the back of my brain for historical people. I was always intrigued by Amelia Earhart. I read her, read a book about her, very wild. And then, 
That's cool. I mean, that was just a random run, one. First of all, yeah, I did. Athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't at the time. I was just a, a young pup. Uh, but yeah, still, you know, it's impressive nonetheless. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna just for lack of my brain working, Amelia Earhart. That sounds good. All right, I'll take your driver here. Unfortunately, uh, you hit it hard enough that you reach this bunker. You now have 270 to the pin from the fairway bunker. Talk me through your decision-making process here. I know we don't have Joe, but. It's so obviously a three wood, because Joe's not here. Um, no, I'm not in a good spot. Uh, we would like to be up by this green in two. We have some lip issue, really good lie here at the Whisperock Golf Club. We always have good lies here. Um, and yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, it's gonna be, I don't really like to play to a certain number uh, to, uh, you know, I kind of did that when I was younger, and now as I've had more time to practice, I like a lot. A lot of numbers, I like to kind of maybe push it up if I can and just see what club I think will get over this lip comfortably and put me in the fairway closest I can to the green. Uh, somewhere between 70 and 100 yards would be great. So if I am doing the math right, that would be about a 200 yard shot to get to 70, 170 to get to 100, hence my math expertise. This is good. In real time, Max, we're impressed. All right, so what club are you going to hit? I think I'm going to go with a seven iron. I, I would, I would, ideally if I was in the fairway lane up to those numbers, I'd hit a six, uh, but I want to, first goal always is to get it up and out of this bunker. Uh, we don't want to hit the shot two times. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to hit a seven iron. It's a very big layup area because you're supposed to hit this fairway and you're not supposed to have to lay up. Um, so I'm just going to take it at one of these billion cacti we have out here. Cacti is plural. And goal is just up, out, and in the, the short grass. What do you think? I don't hate it. I pulled a little, but for my second swing of the day, I'm actually quite impressed with myself. All right, great. You do this, you do this after. Yeah, you yeah, like that's, you're making that's it easier really on the caddy. We have people that are gonna uh, rake that for you, I think. Thank you. Uh, if you could have one shot back in your career, what would it be? Oh, only one? <laughs> uh, recency bias, I'm sure there's another one. But there was a sh there was it was a putt this year at the Scottish Open on Sunday. I was making a wild charge and looked up at the leaderboard, walking down this uh, that par three number thir 14, 13 or 14, I think, and I stuck it in close, like four feet. And it was a bit windy, and I didn't trust my read at all, and uh, I just shoved it out there and missed this putt, and I would've got within one of the lead. And the way I was playing, I thought I'd have a pretty good chance of posting a score and putting some pressure on Xander. I missed that putt, doubled the next, did the normal thing where you just start to stink uh, for four or five holes after you miss a kind of a bunny. And that one this year for sure was, I just felt like that would've, that would have been a pretty cool, I love Scotland, I love playing golf overseas, and that would have been a really cool event to, I feel like I had a real good chance to win coming out in the last couple holes and that putt really, really stung. What's your hottest sports take? Boy, got a lot of those. Uh, my hottest sports take, uh, Michael Jordan didn't need to switch hands to the left when he did the layup against the Lakers. Wow. Still a, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Takes nothing away from Michael Jordan, best basketball player ever, but uh, that's always been my take. That that is. Do you think a little showy? No, it's not on him. It's just more on like us as viewers that we've decided that that's one of the best plays in the history of basketball, and I just don't I don't buy that one. He has a lot lot cooler ones. Wow, what's the last TV show or movie that made you cry? Uh, a sneaky cry during the Redeem Team uh, documentary when Doug Collins was talking about getting the flowers from the players with the, uh, and Kobe Bryant and all that. That one hit me, I don't know why. That one, uh, big Kobe guy and I don't know, that was a very random one because I usually don't cry during uh, random TV, and, uh, TV shows and movies. What's the place that you do your best thinking? Uh, my car flights a lot of the times uh, and then like when I'm by myself I eat by myself a lot and I feel like that's when I solve the world's problems by myself and then I don't do anything about it <laughs> uh, if you were stuck on a flight next to someone else from the PGA Tour 
Who would you most and least like to be stuck next to? Most like to be stuck next to? Probably Joel Damon. Me and Joel are good friends and he's easy to talk to. Uh, we would drink <laughs> on the flight. I really enjoy being next to him. Least, Dylan Fratelli. Dylan always asks me trivia questions when we play golf. I don't know anything. I'm not some worldly cultured smart guy. So I just feel dumb. And I feel like he'd give me like a four hour flight with him and he would just, he could, he could make me feel dumb real fast. All right, the folks in the booth are telling us we've got 118 to the flag. Looks like a little uphill into the wind off the right. Um, what are you thinking here? I'm thinking it's cold because I'm seven iron didn't go very far. So uh, this 118, did you say it was adjusted or do I need to do this? No, somewhere? 118 flat. Okay, so then it's mat. probably, I, I've been here before, this is up about five. So 123 playing cold. So it's probably closer to 127, 128. Wind's just dead off the right. So it'll hurt my cut a little bit. So I'd want to probably hit about a one, 130 shot. Uh-oh, hold on, I'm getting word from the booth that number was adjusted. So it's actually 113 adjusted to 118. Apologies to the viewers and to Max. So 113 uh, flat, 118 adjusted. Uh, the good news was I'm exactly on that it's five uphill. Uh, that seven iron didn't go very far, so uh, I know it's playing cold, so that 118 number is gonna play a little closer to 122, 123. Um, I think because the wind's a little off the right and maybe a touch in all of a sudden, I think it's gonna play close to like a 128, 130 shot. I'm in between a little bit. I think I'm gonna flatten out my 50 degree and bring it in a little lower. I think the pitching wedge is gonna be just a harder shot. Although if this wind keeps switching, I'm gonna to have to do the thing where I back off and throw up the grass and act like I know what I'm doing. Is this always going on in your head and now you're just kind of vocalizing? Yeah, yeah, I thought that's what you guys, what you guys wanted to live in my head for a no hole. Definitely, it's just a busy place. It is a busy place, man. Ooh, what do you think? I like it. It might be a little deep. A little deep is my guess. It was straight at the flag. What's the most starstruck you've ever been? Uh, my, I met Michael Jordan, it was very frightening. <laughs> he was super nice, awesome dude, but he uh, he's a big dude, obviously. And he's, I don't know, he's like the first athlete, him and Tiger was the first athletes I can like remember admiring and watching uh, and he's just he, he's an incredible basketball player then he has this you know shoe line so just his name alone carries so much weight so getting to meet him for the first time was very I was very starstruck um, how about Tiger Woods are you still starstruck by him a, a little in a different way um, I, I still think it's it's I think it's more so that I, I think it's crazy in a cool way that the dude I looked up to the reason I, you know, a lot of us play golf, what, who, who made golf cool for kids, like golf allows the opportunity for us to play with him and compete against him. I think that's quite odd and, and awesome. So uh, I don't think I'm starstruck anymore, but it's always, it is cool whenever Tiger's in a golf tournament or Tiger's in a room just because he means so much to the game. What's the coolest walk you've had in golf? Yeah, 18, uh, walking up 18, St. Andrews behind Tiger with Matt Fitzpatrick. Uh, I missed the cut and that part was a bummer. Uh, but just getting to watch the outpour of admiration for a guy that we admire, like I said, but I, I found that to be special. Watching the other players, watching him play golf was cool. Um, I don't know, it was just eerie. I just feel like it was like a once in a, once in a lifetime, really cool moment had a really, really cool golf course. So it was just, uh, that walk up 18 is always special, but it was especially cool getting to see all that. What's the uh, question you're most tired of answering? Anything about uh, Twitter <laughs> or swing roasts. How'd you start swing roasts? That one gets a little bit old, but. So how'd you start swing roasts? Yeah, a uh, guy named uh, Random. I was at, um, I flew to Long Beach, to practice 
it was late, so it was like 9.30. I just got to my hotel room. I was about to go to bed. I do the normal thing I do. I scroll my phone. I uh, get a tweet from, I think his name is Brian. And he said, uh, he sent me a video of his swing. He said, roast me uh, like you're Gordon Ramsay. I responded uh, with the GIF because his angle was terrible. Like it was like a low angle. You could barely see his golf swing. And I just used the GIF that said, uh, when Gordon Ramsay said, what are you? And it's got the bread on the woman's head. And she says, an idiot sandwich. And it's a funny GIF. And I did maybe one more that night, two more. And I woke up, checked my phone. But I woke up really early and I checked, I had one or two more. I didn't do anything with them. And uh, finished practicing for the day, got to the airport at like one or two. So I hadn't been by my phone for, you know, six, seven hours and I had like a lot. So I was on the flight, so I did a few more, turned off my phone, landed, had a ton more. And then for about two, three days, um, it was mayhem. Uh, and it's toned down because I fortunately stopped doing it, but uh, it was fun. It's been really cool. Uh, it's not that I, I uh, it's not that I'm anti swing roasting. It's just I'm first off out of material. I'm not a professional comedian, and second off, uh, the only annoyance is like when you run into people in public and or at a golf tournament. I hear people say that's the swing roast guy, and it's like it just you know it, that's not what you want to hear really. Like I'm the, I won five times. <laughs> I, I would rather be known for that, but it's okay. Uh, as long as people are you know enjoying golf, uh, it's, it was cool to see how many people both other athletes, celebrity, and just uh, your Sunday golfer are so obsessed with their golf swing uh, and want to be good at this game. That was the really fun part of it for me, um, just to see how many people love this game that I love. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm out. I don't have much more material. I've seen enough bad golf swings. That it's just only so much one person can say. All right, for being sick of that question, that was your longest answer yet. Yeah. So here, all right, Matt. I've answered a million times. What do you have, 12 feet for birdie here? Yeah, 12, 13 feet. You want the pin out? I would love the pin out. Thank you, Dylan. So I do this really cool thing called aim point that makes you look awesome. Nobody makes fun of you about it ever. Yeah, yeah. Fans definitely love that when they show it on TV. JT made fun of me the other day. I was <laughs> at Congaree and he was on 18 and I was on uh, like 12 because I was beating him by so many, maybe 11. And he was just standing there going like this at me. And it just make, get made fun of, but it is still cool when the ball goes in the hole. So this makes the ball go in the hole more. All right, so you don't have to explain all of aim point, but what are you seeing here? Yeah, so uh, you feel break. So I feel, I practice with a level uh, on the practice screen. So I, I feel how much of a percentage there is, and then that quantifies to a number. Uh, and then you use that to, uh, you put your finger up by the hole, and that shows you, it's math. It shows you exactly how far out side the hole a putt would be. Uh, so it kind of just eliminates, if you get really, really good at it, you can eliminate a very large variable of golf, which is reading putts. So where's this one going roughly? This one is four, three to four inches outside the right. Max Homa for birdie. Wind got me. Uh-oh. It's a really good putt. You got gusted. I got gusted. And then when you're at your home course, these are always good. Oh. And then we pick up made five. <laughs> Very clever. It's a really good, a really good part. You guys make this hard. No warm up, no anything. Max, Windy what's the cold. best celebration you've ever had after a uh, tournament win? Uh, any age. Man, there's got to be a cool pizza party in there somewhere when I was a young pup. Um, after I won LA, it was quite fun. We, uh, one of my favorite bars in town, Bevy basically kept it open late because I got in real late. All my friends were there uh, and tried to drink this place out of beer. Did not win. Did not win. Uh, what's your celebratory drink of choice? Elijah Craig, man. Elijah Craig, oh, company man. Company well said. Man. All right, Max, thanks for playing a hole with us. Let's go get some Elijah. Sounds good, thank you.